Okay, I'm going to show the programming that I've done on my KD270 and this is using the 270 degree rotation servos and this would be the first program that I've written with it. Basically I went, uh, went through and did some programming that should have the front arm legs keeping the camera, arm legs waving, uh, should do two back flips then should do a walk forward sequence I'm trying to remember what all I put on there. <laughs> After the walk forward sequence, I believe I did. Yes, and somewhere in there I had to do some begging, face down, reverse butt up, wave, flat, a little bit of prancing like the Boston Dynamics, and oh, and turning. Had to do some turning too. Anyway, it was just the very first program that I've written with it, and uh, then I'll take the top off and I'll show you how. Nice things looked inside using the uh, new printed circuit boards that I got at PCB Way, dirt cheap, and uh, let's let's give it a go. I believe that's in camera frame, isn't it? Okay. The eyes are flashing. And then it should do the walk forward. Then it did a little bit of prancing, and here is the reverse bag standing up. And here it should get back up onto its feet and uh, turn. Then once it gets all done with the uh, turn routine, then it basically would just start the original routine over again because that's how I programmed it. And I think right about in there somewhere is in it. Yep, there we go. So then it's just going to start over and doing its arm waving and all that good stuff. All right, um, I'm gonna move the camera, so hang on. Everybody. It's tight quarters here. For those of you that are interested in this sort of thing, here's the, uh, Turn this light off. There we go. There's just a picture of a, well, it's a screen. Picture of the screen showing some of the programming. If you like programming in this kind of a mode, this is showing the, the script, if you will. You got your frames, you got your duration times, you got all of that. And then we get down into uh, and doing some of the movements. And some of the movements, for example, in the walk and in the turn, I would get a sequence down that I liked and then I would simply tell it to repeat. And it would repeat it. But uh, that's what that looks like. Now, if you want to see how the inside of the robot looks, let's get the camera set up so that shows. Let's get back a little bit. There we go. Somewhere like that, hopefully. And um, I did notice that using these new uh, uh, 270 degree servos, they're digital servos, they said, I get a lot longer battery life than I did with the uh, old 180 degree analog servos. I think it's because, you know, with the analog ones, they're always sitting there chattering, powering the motor one way or the other. I think that constant current draw, whereas these digital ones, their standby is somewhere between <clears throat> 5 and 10 milliamps. So the standby current is very low. And there we have it. That's how it turned out on the, on the inside. And of course the battery would come out like that. Contact plate there, cut down spring plate there. There's the uh, Maestro. In this case it's the Micro. I used to call it the Mini Maestro, but it looks like they changed the name on the website to a Micro Maestro. It's the six channel one. You know, they make them 12 channels, 16 channel, 24, 36. I mean, they make control as many things as you want. But this is the smallest one. And here you can see the buck boost regulator. That particular one can takes this uh, 3.7 volt battery and gets it up to uh, 5 volts for these two servos. This upright one over here is for these front two servos and there's one tucked in right in there which uh, boosts this up for the maestro to give it its power 
So it turned out really nice. So uh, what's next on this project is, uh, you know, I originally started this, I wanted to do it the cheapest way possible. And that was why I used the standard 180 degree servo. I um, got that unit still. It doesn't have the uh, Maestro programmer anymore, but it still has the servos. If you've seen the old videos on this guy. This is the standard one. It started there. I just wanted to find out the most least expensive way that I could build one of these. And of course that was that way. Because those servos you can find anywhere from, I mean if you search long enough you can get them for like a buck a piece, buck twenty-five. These ones I got off uh, AliExpress and uh, it came out with shipping and everything to be just about four dollars per servo. Uh, the most expensive thing in the whole project is the Polo Micro Maestro, the six channel control board. Those used to be 15 bucks, but these days they seem to be on the Polo Lu uh, website. They're about 22 to 24 dollars, somewhere in that range. I can't remember. Uh, online, other sellers are selling them for more, so it's cheaper just to go ahead and buy them right from Polo Lu. Um, what else? I already had the battery, so that wasn't an expense. Oh, what I was getting at is what's next for this whole project is I wanted to see how it would look with a completely transparent case, uh, actually clear case. So like I had seen in some other videos on YouTube, people that have had parts made by a PCB way in a clear resin 3D printed part, it really looked clear. It was really quite amazing. And then I got a sample. Let me see if I still have it here. Uh, I do still have the sample, but I don't know where. It's in this room somewhere. Anyway, I showed it in some of my earlier videos, and it was completely clear. It was thick and it was solid. So I went ahead and set up the uh, the files, because it's just a, a body, a top, and uh, four legs. Of course, I do have the legs in the short version because when you put the pencil erasers on the end for traction, that would make the normal legs too long uh, for the programming. So uh, I did set up two different sets of legs and I also checked around to see if anyone could do the parts cheaper and I couldn't find anyone that was going to do the parts cheaper than PCBWay even when I ran it through a, another uh, site that a YouTuber had mentioned PCBWay was still cheaper. It was like $16 to have the main body piece made. Um, they kind of have a minimum price and minimum quantity. For example, when I sent the legs in, five is their standard minimum on that. And uh, so it was like $12 to have the four legs made. I could specify, for example, that I only want one leg, but the price still stayed the same. So it didn't make sense to lower that. Now, in the case of the body, it, if it of course, wanted to default to ordering five of them, but I didn't want five bodies, and it kind of priced it at about 16 bucks a body. So in that case, I did go down to the one. The price didn't, the, you know, the price stayed at that minimum. So it really kind of depends on the size of the object and how much material it's going to use. Anyway, I have placed the order for that. We'll see how long they take to get here. Um, I believe I put them on the least expensive shipping as well, because I learned that after my first orders with them that it defaults to the most expensive shipping method, which is supposed to be the fastest, you know, to get them to you in a few days. But I don't like spending, you know, 24 to $30 on shipping when if you go through their shipping thing, which is kind of hidden, but once you find it, you know where to look. Uh, you can get down to what they call their global pricing and even USPS pricing. And I think that's what I did on the uh, clear parts. So that means it probably would take uh, 8 to 13 days for the parts to arrive after they've been made. So we're going to wait and see. When they come, And I'm because uh, I'm not spending more money, I'm just going to transfer all of these parts. Because actually nothing is held in here that can't be removed with the exception of my battery connections. I put a little dab of glue on the back of that to hold it there and a little dab of glue to hold that there. So I can just cut those, lift them out, take the legs off, remove these holders, lift the servos out, then the board should come out. Should be able to put all the parts into the new uh, unit and uh, we'll see how that works because it could be kind of cool to uh, 
be able to stare in there. Of course on the bottom all you're going to see is the bottom of the circuit board but through the sides and through the top we should be able to see the battery and the controller and the servos and all of that good kind of stuff. Of course that switch just sits in there and then when the lid is in place that locks it down and then I put in four uh, small uh, number two screws to hold the lid on. Alright that's it for this video.